The payment card industry data security standard is a proprietary information security standard for organizations that handle cardholder information for the major debit, credit, prepaid, e-purse, ATM, and POS cards. Defined by the Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council, the standard was created to increase controls around cardholder data to reduce credit card fraud via its exposure. Validation of compliance is performed annually either by an external qualified security assessor that creates a report on compliance for organizations handling large volumes of transactions, or by self-assessment questionnaire for companies handling smaller volumes. History PCI DSS originally began as five different programs, Visa's Cardholder Information Security Program, MasterCard Site Data Protection, American Express Data Security Operating Policy, Discovers Information Security and Compliance, and the JCB's Data Security Program. Each company's intentions were roughly similar, to create an additional level of protection for card issuers by ensuring that merchants meet minimum levels of security when they store, process and transmit cardholder data. The Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council was formed, and on December 15, 2004, these companies aligned their individual policies and released version 1.0 of the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. In September 2006, the PCI standard was updated to version 1.1 to provide clarification and minor revisions to version 1.0. Version 1.2 was released on October 1, 2008. Version 1.1 sunsetted on December 31, 2008. V1.2 did not change requirements, only enhanced clarity, improved flexibility, and addressed evolving risks threats. In August 2009 the PCI SSC announced the move from version 1.2 to version 1.2.1 for the purpose of making minor corrections designed to create more clarity and consistency among the standards and supporting documents. Version 2.0 was released in October 2010 and is active for merchants and service providers from January 1, 2011 to December 31, 2014. Version 3.0 was released in November 2013 and is active from January 1, 2014 to December 31, 2016. Requirements The PCI Data Security Standards specifies 12 requirements for compliance, organized into six logically related groups called control objectives. Each version of PCI DSS has divided these 12 requirements into a number of sub-requirements differently but the 12 high-level requirements have not changed since the inception of the standard. Updates and supplemental information The PCI SSC has released several supplemental pieces of information to clarify various requirements. These documents include the following, Information Supplement, Requirement 11.3 Penetration Testing, Information Supplement, Requirement 6.6 .6 Code Reviews and Application Firewalls Clarified. Navigating the PCI DSS, Understanding the Intent of the Requirements, Information Supplement, PCI DSS Wireless Guidelines, Compliance versus Validation of Compliance, Although the PCI DSS must be implemented by all entities that process, store or transmit cardholder data, formal validation of PCI DSS compliance is not mandatory for all entities. Currently both Visa and MasterCard require merchants and service providers to be validated according to the PCI DSS. Smaller merchants and service providers are not required to explicitly validate compliance with each of the controls prescribed by the PCI DSS although these organizations must still implement all controls in order to maintain safe harbor and avoid potential liability in the event of fraud associated with theft of cardholder data. Issuing banks are not required to go through PCI DSS validation although they still have to secure the sensitive data in a PCI DSS compliant manner. Acquiring banks are required to comply with PCI DSS as well as to have their compliance validated by means of an audit. Mandated compliance Compliance with PCI DSS is not required by federal law in the United States. However, the laws of some U.S. states either refer to PCI DSS directly, or make equivalent provisions. In 2007, Minnesota enacted a law prohibiting the retention of payment card data. In 2009, 
Nevada incorporated the standard interstate law, requiring compliance of merchants doing business in that state with the current PCI DSS, and shields compliant entities from liability. In 2010, Washington also incorporated the standard interstate law. Unlike Nevada's law, entities are not required to be compliant to PCI DSS, but compliant entities are shielded from liability in the event of a data breach. Compliance and Wireless LANs In July 2009, the Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council published wireless guidelines for PCI DSS recommending the use of wireless intrusion prevention system to automate wireless scanning for large organizations. Wireless guidelines clearly define how wireless security applies to PCI DSS 1.2 compliance. These guidelines apply to the deployment of wireless LAN and cardholder data environments, also known as CDEs. A CDE is defined as a network environment that possesses or transmits credit card data. Wireless LAN and CDE classification PCI DSS wireless guidelines classify CDEs into three scenarios depending on how wireless LANs are deployed. No known WLAN AP inside or outside the CDE, the organization has not deployed any WLAN AP. In this scenario, three minimum scanning requirements of the PCI DSS apply. Known WLAN AP outside the CDE. The organization has deployed WLANAPs outside the CDE. These WLANAPs are segmented from the CDE by a firewall. There are no known WLANAPs inside the CDE. In this scenario, three minimum scanning requirements of the PCI DSS apply. Known WLANAP inside the CDE. The organization has deployed WLANAPs inside the CDE. In this scenario, three minimum scanning requirements, as well as six secure deployment requirements of the PCI DSS apply. Key sections of PCI DSS 1.2 that are relevant for wireless security are classified and defined below. Secure deployment requirements for wireless LANs These secure deployment requirements apply to only those organizations that have a known WLAN AP inside the CDE. The purpose of these requirements is to deploy WLAN APs with proper safeguards. Section 2.1.1 Change Defaults Change Default Passwords SSIDs on Wireless Devices Enable WPA or WPA2 Security Section 4.1.1802.11 I Security Set up APs in WPA or WPA2 mode with 802.1x authentication and AES encryption. Use of WEP and CDE is not allowed after June 30, 2010. Section 9.1.3 Physical Security Restrict physical access to known wireless devices. Section 10.5.4 Wireless Logs Archive wireless access centrally using a WIPS for one year. Section 10.6 Log Review Review wireless access logs daily. Section 12.3 Usage Policies Develop usage policies to list all wireless devices regularly. Develop usage possible for the use of wireless devices. Minimum scanning requirements for wireless LANs. These minimum scanning requirements apply to all organizations regardless of the type of wireless LAN deployment in the CDE. The purpose of these requirements is to eliminate any rogue or unauthorized WLAN activity inside the CDE. Section 11.1 .1 Quarterly Wireless Scan Scan all sites with CDEs whether or not they have known WLANAPs in the CDE. Sampling of sites is not allowed. A WIPS is recommended for large organizations since it is not possible to manually scan or conduct a walk around wireless security audit of all sites on a quarterly basis. Section 11.4 Monitor Alerts Enable automatic WIPS alerts to instantly notify personnel of rogue devices and unauthorized wireless connections into the CDE. Section 12.9 Eliminate threats, prepare an incident response plan to monitor and respond to alerts from the WIPS. Enable automatic containment mechanism on WIPS to block rogues and unauthorized wireless connections. PCI Compliance in Call Centers while the PCI DSS standards are very explicit about the requirements for the back-end storage and access of PII, 
The payment card industry security standards council has said very little about the collection of that information on the front end, whether through websites, interactive voice response systems or call center agents. This is surprising, given the high threat potential for credit card fraud and data compromise that call centers pose. In a call center, customers read their credit card information, CVV codes, and expiration dates to call center agents. There are few controls which prevent the agent from skimming this information with a recording device or a computer or physical notepad. Moreover, almost all call centers deploy some kind of call recording software, which is capturing and storing all of this sensitive consumer data. These recordings are accessible by a host of call center personnel, are often unencrypted, and generally do not fall under the PCI DSS standards outlined here. Home-based telephone agents pose an additional level of challenges, requiring the company to secure the channel from the home-based agent through the call center hub to the retailer applications. To address some of these concerns, on January 22, 2010 the Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council issued a revised FAQ about call center recordings. The bottom line is that companies can no longer store digital recordings that include CVV information if those recordings can be queried. Though the council has not yet issued any requirements, technology solutions can completely prevent skimming by agents. At the point in the transaction where the agent needs to collect the credit card information, the call can be transferred to an interactive voice response system. This protects the sensitive information but can create an awkward customer interaction. Solutions such as agent-assisted automation allow the agent to collect the credit card information without ever seeing or hearing it. The agent remains on the phone and customers enter their credit card information directly into the customer relationship management software using their phones. The DTMF tones are converted to monotones so the agent cannot recognize them and so that they cannot be recorded. This also ensures a greater level of customer satisfaction as callers understand the security benefits, thereby improving the business consumer relationship. PCI compliant solutions can be deployed easily within company premises, or through the telephony provider network cloud. If going through the network cloud, no hardware or software needs to be installed in the organization itself. This ensures seamless integration with the call center environment with minimal disruption to agents, or current IT systems, whilst also reducing risk by enabling rapid implementation. The benefits of increasing the security around the collection of personally identifiable information goes beyond credit card fraud to include helping merchants win chargebacks due to friendly fraud. Controversies and criticisms it has been suggested by some IT security professionals that the PCI DSS does little more than provide a minimal baseline for security. The fact is you can be PCI compliant and still be insecure. Look at online application vulnerabilities. They're arguably the fastest growing area of security, and for good reason Euro exposures in customer facing applications pose a real danger of a security breach. Greg Reber PCI DSS has been called AA Euro or an scammer Euro by a spokesman for the National Retail Federation and others who say eat a Euro unregistered trademark S designed less to secure card data than to profit credit card companies while giving them executive powers of punishment through a mandated compliance system that has no oversight. According to Stephen and Theodora Euro OE Sicia Euro McCum, owners of Cicero a Euro unregistered trademark S Ristorante and Nightclub in Park City, Utah, the PCI system is less a system for securing customer card data than a system for raking in profits for the card companies via fines and penalties. Visa and MasterCard impose fines on merchants even when there is no fraud loss at all, simply because the fines a Euro are profitable to them, a Euro. Additionally, Michael Jones, CIO of Michael's Stores, testifying before a U.S. Congress subcommittee regarding the PCI DSS, says. The PCI DSS requirements are very expensive to implement, confusing to comply with, and ultimately subjective, both in their interpretation and in their enforcement. It is often stated that there are only 12 a Euro OE requirements a Euro for PCI compliance. In fact there are over 220 sub-requirements. 
some of which can place an incredible burden on a retailer and many of which are subject to interpretation. In contrast, others have suggested that PCI DSS is a step toward making all businesses pay more attention to IT security, even if minimum standards are not enough to completely eradicate security problems. Regulation, SOX, HIPAA, GLBA, the credit card industry's PCI, the various disclosure laws, the European Data Protection Act, whatever, has been the best stick the industry has found to beat companies over the head with. And it works. Regulation forces companies to take security more seriously, and sells more products and services. Bruce Schneer, further, per PCI Council General Manager Bob Brusso's response to the National Retail Federation, PCI is a structured blend of specificity and high-level concepts that allow stakeholders the opportunity and flexibility to work with qualified security assessors to determine appropriate security controls within their environment that meet the intent of the PCI standards. Compliance and compromises, according to Visa Chief Enterprise Risk Officer, Ellen Ritchie. No compromised entity has yet been found to be in compliance with PCI DSS at the time of a breach. However, it has nevertheless become a common misconception that companies have had security breaches while also being PCI DSS compliant. Much of this confusion is a result of the 2008 Heartland Payment Systems breach, wherein more than 100 million card numbers were compromised. Around this same time Hornayford Brothers and TJX companies were similarly breached as a result of the alleged very same source of coordinated efforts of Albert Segvik Gonzalez and two unnamed Russian hackers. Assessments examine the compliance of merchants and services providers with the PCI DSS at a specific point in time and frequently utilize a sampling methodology to allow compliance to be demonstrated through representative systems and processes. It is the responsibility of the merchant and service provider to achieve, demonstrate, and maintain their compliance at all times both throughout the annual validation assessment cycle and across all systems and processes in their entirety. Therefore, these frequently cited breaches and their pointed use as a tool for criticism even to the point of noting that Horn Nayford Brothers had, in fact, received its PCI DSS compliance validation one day after it had been made aware of a two-month-long compromise of its internal systems. Fail to appropriately assign blame in their blasting of the standard itself as flawed as opposed to the more truthful breakdown in merchant and service provider compliance with the written standard albeit in this case having not been identified by the assessor. Other, more substantial, criticism lies in that compliance validation is required only for level 1 to 3 merchants and may be optional for level 4 depending on the card brand and acquirer. Visa's compliance validation details for merchants state that level 4 merchants compliance validation requirements are set by the acquirer. Visa Level 4 Merchants are merchants processing less than 20,000 Visa e-commerce transactions annually and all other merchants processing up to 1 million Visa transactions annually. At the same time over 80% of payment card compromises between 2005 and 2007 affected Level 4 merchants. They handle 32% of transactions. Compliance is a snapshot. The state of being PCI DSS compliant might appear to have some temporal persistence, at least from a merchant point of view. In contrast, the PCI Standards Council General Manager Bob Brusso has indicated that liabilities could change depending on the state of a given organization at the point in time when an actual breach occurs. See also, Penetration Test, Vulnerability Management, Wireless LAN, Wireless Security, References. Books on PCI DSS, PCI DSS Handbook, PCI DSS, A Practical Guide to Implementation, PCI Compliance, Understand and Implement Effective PCI Data Security Standard Compliance, External Links, PCI SSC Data Security Standards Overview, PCI Quick Reference Guide, List of PCI DSS Compliant Organizations.